My name's Abby, and I'm nine. And I have a question. Um, how are crystals made? I'm Ilya Guzé, a senior scientist at the UW Medicine Chemistry Department. And today I will tell you how crystals form. Crystals form by a process called crystallization that signifies transition from chaos to perfection. Unlike biological systems, crystals do not draw nourishment from within, they grow from the outside by one of three major ways, either from a vapor, from a melt, or from a solution. In each case, it's a three-step process. It begins with nucleation, in which a few molecules or atoms approach each other in a suitable orientation to form a stable submicroscopic aggregate. The second stage is growth, which is an orderly addition of further molecules or atoms to the surface of the crystal in a regular manner. In fact, the outer shape of the crystal is determined by its internal structure. The symmetry of the shapes of the crystals is the most recognizable feature. In the final step, termination, growth stops. When crystals grow at the same rate in all directions, a uniform crystal is produced. When a crystal grows rapidly in two directions but slowly in the other one, we end up with a plate-like crystal. And when a crystal grows rapidly in one direction and slowly in the other two, a needle is obtained. It's interesting to estimate how rapidly molecules should arrange themselves at the surface of a growing crystal. Even if a crystal is growing at a rate of one-tenth of an inch per day, about a hundred layers of molecules must, must be laid down per second at the crystal surface. In terms of size, there is no limit to how large a crystal one may grow. We are only limited by our patience and material supply. Crystals that are found in nature are called minerals, but there are also crystals that are not found in nature and are made by scientists. For example, crystals of protein of proteins of or viruses.